was Gucci chat. It is your boy SJ K Dot, the first black super saiyan who ever arrived on this planet. Was Gucci? Yeah, it's your boy K Dot, first black super saiyan who ever arrived on this planet. Look, I want to do my own trailer breakdown of Spider Man Far From Home. Want to break it down my way, you know, the way I look at it, the way I look at it, and then we're gonna have a little discussion at the end regarding something else because I'm gonna need some help from the subscribers, the little subs that's gonna help me out with this. Um, look, as you know, there's gonna be end game spoilers up in here, so if you have not seen end game, you must not have cared to go watch Avengers End Game, the movie's close to making probably three billion. So if you have not seen Avengers End Game, and you haven't watched it yet, and you don't care enough to go see it, uh, bounce up out of here. I'm just saying. To save you from getting spoiled. That's really what it is. So, let's get into this video. Uh, we're not going to start from the whole message, because he's just going to talk about, oh, blah, 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 go see Avengers Endgame. Let's go. Let's just break this trailer down. So, I'm going to pause it. This is not trailer reaction. I already reacted to it. Go check out that video. This is a breakdown. So, let's go. Everywhere I go, I see his face. I just really miss him. Yeah, I miss him too. I don't think Tony would have done what he did if he didn't know that you were going to be here after he was gone. Now, this was a great start to the trailer. It was a good start. They were showing the emotion of how the snap affected them, of how of how recovery of the, of the snap is taking their toll on, on them, and the death of Iron Man is taking their toll on him. They're showing a recovery. But this is the problem with this. And this has been my problem ever since Spider-Man they introduced. For sure, they have made... They have made... If you, if you, Whether you want to deny it, whether you don't want to believe it, Iron Man is the new Uncle Ben. He is Uncle Ben. He is Uncle Ben, bro. He is Uncle Ben. For one, in this universe, they never name-dropped Uncle Ben. Spider-Man never even said it. Uncle Ben's name, even in Homecoming once. You know, that's just, in my opinion, sort of a low-key disrespect to the character Uncle Ben. Because Uncle Ben, there's a reason. It's like this. Taking out, uh, taking Uncle Ben out of Spider-Man's origin is like taking out the fact that Magneto dealt with the Holocaust in his origin. It takes away from it. You know, it's like certain things you have to keep. That's the general core of the character. Because biggest biggest reason, you know, one of the one this is not the biggest reason, but one of the reasons. When Peter got his powers, and this was before Uncle Ben died, Peter, you know, he was getting used to his powers. And for a time, Peter was probably gonna use was gonna use his powers for his own gain. But it didn't take until Uncle Ben died that pushed him more into the route of with great power comes a great responsibility. Yeah, there's things I wanna do with my power that will benefit me. That will benefit me, but with this great power I want to do something great with it. I just don't want to use it for my personal gain. So there's a lot with Uncle Ben. And my problem with this is they're trying to make Iron Man Uncle Ben. Look, I get Iron Man died. You know, Iron Man, he's not even my favorite character at all in the comics or movies. He's not my favorite character in any way, shape, or form. He's just cool to me. That's it. But at the end of the day, you throwing shade at Uncle Ben by making Iron Man the Uncle Ben of these films, and he's not that, bro. And the fact is, they're still lingering on this. Look, I get Spider-Man just died. I get Iron Man just died, but a great way to start off your trailer by bringing up Iron Man. I'm here to see a Spider-Man film. So, yeah. I didn't come to see Iron Man, the inspiration for Spider-Man. And you guys, I know you guys may say, oh, but in the comics, Iron Man is a huge inspiration to Spider-Man, and he's like always like mentoring him. Well... In this universe, from what I've seen, you are right. You may be right because from what I've seen, nobody gives a hell, nobody gives a damn about Uncle Ben at all. And Spider-Man fans say, "Oh, this is a comic accurate Peter Parker." Yeah. Okay. But you can see they're taking from the Ultimates universe in this for this Spider-Man. Bring you know, bringing in Nick Fury and stuff. Spider-Man joining up with Shield, helping out Nick Fury and stuff, working under him. So they're taking a lot from the Ultimates. Let's get going. Let's go back. I want to see this action sequence.
He gonna be the next Iron Man now? Well, no. I don't. Hey, the visuals look litty like a titty, bro. The visuals are litty. But at the end of the day, this action sequence, it's cool and all, but I just seen them web up dudes, bro. I didn't see them throw no punches or nothing at these dudes. That's my other problem with Tom Holland Spider-Man in this universe. Like, bro, throw some hands. Show me some Spider-Man combos, bro. Spider-Man doesn't just shoot webs. He also has to kick, punch. Show me, bro. Because in Spider-Man Homecoming, he was just shooting webs and he was getting beat up by Vulture the whole film. That was a huge turnoff of Spider-Man Homecoming. Seen him get beat up three times in a row by Vulture. He got beat up three times in a row, bro, by Vulture. Every encounter with Vulture, he lost that. He got beat up bad. Well, the fairy fight, it wasn't much of a beatdown. It was pretty much he webbed him and then he left. Well, no, he lost. He pretty much got away. Yeah, he lost that fight. He lost a physical battle. Let's keep going, yo. Let's keep going. But hey, I like the visuals. I like the action sequences. For the most part, he, you know, he's shooting his webs and stuff. I like it. I'm trying to be more strategic. But another problem with this scene is the fact that Spider-Man is still relying on his suit. And I'm going to tell you this much. He ain't made no damn modifications to that suit. Because the suit is already pretty much modified to the point where you don't need to do any more to it. So I know for a fact. I'm putting money on it right now. All the suits we see in this movie, he didn't, he didn't make not one of them. I'm putting money on it right now that he doesn't make not any not one of these suits in this movie. I'm putting money on it, bro. Spider-Man did not make any of these suits in this movie. I'm putting money on that. And if that's the case, that's a huge turnoff. Because at the end of the day, Spider-Man, he makes his own. That's what makes Spider-Man Spider-Man. Sure, they let him build his web shooters. but And he made some goggles. But that's it. Show me, show me him building more stuff. To Iron Man just handed him tech. Now, you know, this is my huge turnoff. You got this super, you got this super powered, charged up Iron Man, it's, well, little Iron Lad with an Iron Man suit made by, made by Stark Industries and is given to Spider-Man and they say, here you go. You got this like 700 different web combinations. Oh, shoot. We might as well add some freaking booster rockets to it. Hell, you might as well add booster rockets to the suit. I mean, it's already close to being an Iron Man suit. It just has a spider symbol on it. You gonna be the next Iron the visuals Man? look well, good. No, I don't have time. I'm too busy doing your jobs. Oh. Oh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Look. Okay, you know, Spider-Man. I like that. He getting a little bit witty. Better, you know, he... Better... Still corny, but better jokes. You know? In Homecoming, he didn't have no witty jokes at all. He didn't have no witty comebacks. And he didn't have the skill to back up the wittiness. That's why in Homecoming, he failed... At being the witty Spider-Man. Because Spider-Man when he cracks his jokes. And he like roasts his enemies. He can back up his back talk with the physical prowess there. But he didn't have that in Homecoming. So I like that here. Keep up the good work. Because I am going on vacation. Another turn off of this film. You're going on vacation. Are you going to take your suit with you? Because what I saw in the official teaser trailer for Homecoming. This dude left his suit at home. Shouts out to Spider-Man. Leaving this suit at home. Good go on vacation. Peter Parker, did you know there is crime that happens in Europe too? I'm just saying. What are you going what are you gonna do? Somebody breaks into a bank in Europe. What is he gonna what is he gonna do? Oh, I'm on vacation. I can't. Nah, it's not uh, that's a very unrealistic thing for Spider-Man to not to do. Leave his suit at home, go to Europe and like, oh, I'm gonna just go on vacation. Nothing will happen in Europe. Well, look like something did. Bank robbery might happen, and this is this is the superhero universe. Bank robberies happen almost all the time. They do. Superhero universe. Heads up. Nick Fury's calling you. I don't really want to talk to Nick Answer Fury. Phone. Why? Because if you don't talk to him, then I have to talk to him. I don't want to talk to him. You sent Nick Fury to voicemail? I gotta go. You do not ghost Nick. I have no issue with him ghosting Nick Fury. I'm, what I feel, I'm totally fine with him kind of like... Going like, nah, I don't want to join up with anybody. I want to be solo. If he has the has the uh, has the um, has the motivation to become to be a solo act like he should have been in the first place, and not being Spider Man's Iron Man's sidekick, then I'm totally fine with that. I'm totally fine with that. I want him to be his own man because that's how they disrespected Spider Man, bring him into this universe. Admi immediately, as, immediately as soon as he came in, 
get he got some Iron Man tech, and you know just like the Civil War comics. But in this this is the difference between the Civil War movie and the Civil War comic. In the Civil War comic, the Civil War comic had build up of past comics ranging from Captain America, Iron Man, X Men, all these different heroes, all these different comics to build up to this story of Civil War. And when we get here. In the comics, you know, Spider-Man, he's already established. He's already established, got his villains, he got his own He got his own arch enemies. He builds, for the most part, his own tech. He overcame stuff on his own. He maybe ran into a few people like Daredevil. But for the most part, he's been on his own and building himself up. Because Spider-Man, at the end of the day, he is another solo act hero like Iron Man. He may not be as rich as Iron Man, but at the end of the day, he's shown that he can be... On his own and stand on his own, but as soon as he came into the MCU, and you cannot sit here and lie to me and say, "Oh, he he he's not a sidekick, bruh." As soon as he came into the MCU for the first time, they rushed him, say he's been Spider Man for six months, and I'm like, okay, I'll believe that. <laughs> Shield hasn't contacted him yet within those six months. Okay, so and then you know they just usher him in, they give him a Tony Stark suit, and then Spider Man Homecoming. <laughs> Iron Man's all Iron Man's in the movie. Like, bro, this is a Spider Man movie. Get up out of here, Tony Stark, bro. Avengers Infinity War. He as soon as he pops in to save Iron Man, hey, thank you, Spider Man, for saving me. Little sidekick. He didn't say it, but you get what I mean. Little sidekick, thanks for saving me from that alien with the giant hammer. Iron Lad. Yes, Iron Man. Hey. Ar hey, Spider Man. Go get the magical wizard guy. Got it. Boss. It's off putting you guys. Spider Man is probably Marvel he probably is he's Marvel's mascot pretty much. Like as far as overall, Spider Man is is Marvel's mascot, bro. He's the mascot. In the MCU, the mascot is more of Iron Man, but overall, Spider Man is the mascot of Marvel, bro. He's the mascot, bro. He's like the one of the he's like He's not the most, you can say he's iconic, but he's the most known hero on there. He's like the most known Marvel hero, Spider-Man, bro. He's that iconic, bro. Dare I say, he's probably up there with Superman and Batman as far as being well-known, like, well-known, like, been known, been known. But they don't give Spider-Man that much credit in the MCU. That's just me. They reduced him to sidekick. And now after seeing Far From Home, I'm turned off to his character completely. Because making him a, a sidekick to Iron Man, bro, you you kill that character for me, bro. And I don't want to see nothing else from you. It's just like, that's in your history that you started out really as Iron Man's sidekick, yo. That's off-putting to me. That's very off-putting. You don't even have a huge, you don't even have a rose gallery. His first official villain is the Vulture, bro. Spider-Man developed the Rose gal Gallery of Villains before he, before he met, you know, sure he met heroes along the way, but he developed the Rogue Galleries of Villains well before, you know, he hopped in with other heroes and stuff and was asked to like, yo, would you be my sidekick? He had his own Rose, he had his, he had his own duties in the MCU. His only duties were for those first six months was school and uh, superhero work. And if, dare I say, it's still the same. He ain't got no job. He's still being a superhero and he's still going to school. And, and he told me, oh, I don't got time for that yet. You got two things going on in your life. School and um, superhero work. And you can do that whenever you want. Sure, you're going to have the urge, like, yo, you might be in your science class, like, yo, Spider-Man, there's, there's a freaking tornado attacking the bank, yo. Man, I'm finna come bust up that tornado with my webs. <laughs> Tornadoes go down. Dun, 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 dun. You guys know what I mean. Let's keep going. Yo, I like that, you know, Happy is still here, but the, another problem, you're bringing stuff from Iron Man, Iron Man, Iron Man into this movie, bro. Spider Man, Spider Man, Spider Man. I want to know about Spider Man. Freak Iron Man. He's dead. Move on. Shit. He's dead. I don't care. What's up? We're just talking about the trip. I'm here in St. Marco Polo's. Oh, I think MJ really likes me. Come on, let's be my first solo. 
you're a very difficult person to contact. So what makes MJ like Spider-Man now? Because from what I've seen in the last Spider-Man Homecoming film, she is very tomboyish. She's uh, a very, she's a social, um, she is um, a social introvert, obviously. She doesn't like to talk to people. She sleeps in class. And she's kind of had a bummy look. It was cute, but a bummy cute look. And now in this film, she's smiling all bright. Ha what the freak happened, bruh? What happened to her so drastically to make that change? And now there's Spider-Man. This, this relationship feels so forced. Liz, Liz, Liz Allen leaves. No, Liz leaves in Spider-Man Homecoming. And now he hops to the next girl in this group. <laughs> Look, it's high school stuff, but dang, you just hop to the next girl in your squad? Okay, dang. Spider-Man. This is Mr. Beck. We could have used someone like you on my world. Your world? Beck is from Earth, just not ours. The snap to our hole in our dimension. You're saying there's a multiverse? We have a job to do, and you're coming with us. Now, I strongly believe Mysterio will be a bad guy. From what I see, he's lying. To now, I'm not saying he's lying about the multiverse. He probably did come through the multiverse and came through our world, but... He's obvious. Those those villains we see are probably his illusions. He's pretending to be a hero. Hey, this could, hey this could be the story. He's probably you know multiverse portal opened up. He's clearly a bad guy in his own universe. He's on the run from the police or whatever the government you know is on the run from him. Maybe in this universe there's some freaking um government new government policy that's established to go in and and lock up villains and and mentally d damaged, you know, super villains and stuff of heroes that are doing crazy stuff. Hell, in Mysterio's universe, he might be lying. There might be a Spider-Man. And he just came over here so he can try to con try to conduct villainous situations where he can come and pretend to be the hero to save the day. Then people are like, yay, Mysterio, you saved us. And then he's going to let it all go to his head. And while people think... Ah, they love me, they love me, they love me. He can do his little bad guy stuff, go rob banks, get famous, and Spider-Man's gonna be like, dude, what the freak you doing, bruh? What you doing, cut? Web sling, web sling, stop. Don't rob the bank. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. You know, he's just doing a little Spider-Man thing, like, yo, don't rob the bank, Mysterio. What's wrong with you, dude? But, you know, you guys know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, if Mysterio's gonna be a bad guy in this movie, we know it's all about illusions, but I'm just saying, if Mysterio ends up being a good guy in this movie, that is trash. If, don't make Mysterio a good guy. But, I'm not saying he won't be. I believe he will be a bad guy, you guys. I believe he's using illusions. So don't get in this comment section talking about, Mysterio's all about illusions, dude. He's gonna be a bad guy. I know. But I'm just saying. If they make him a good guy, and he ends up being a good guy, trash. He better be a bad guy. But I believe he will. That's just to kill all the stuff in comments, people coming in. Oh. We should all get to this now. My problem with the multiverse. I have no issue with the multiverse being introduced, but the fact is, the multiverse always been there. All right, we always, like, in the DC movies, the, the MC, the Marvel movies, Multiverse has always been there. They always been in the comics. So so realistically, they're going to be in the movies. They may not be acknowledging it, but they are there. In in these comic book worlds, the multiverses exist. Now, this is my problem with how Endgame established the multiverse because they they, they go go watch my video of how I did art and and this is why the time travel in Endgame was done so poorly because even the writers and directors, the Russo brothers and the Russo brothers and the writers still disagree on the time travel when they shouldn't be doing that. They should have a solid agreement on what their time travel with. Because as of now, the Russo brothers are going around giving their take on time travel. And then the the writers of the movies are giving their take on time travel and they're misleading people because they don't have a agreement on something. And that is wrong. That is a very foul. That's an L on your part in your, in your bad script, your bad storytelling. If you, if the writers and directors after a movie comes out and are still giving two different pieces of information. Now, from what I heard, the writers 
point of view makes more sense. It does, because this was stated in the movie. The Ancient One stated, well, let me paraphrase that. If you take, for example, the time stone out of our universe, our universe will not have a time stone. If you take our, if you take a time stone out of our universe, it is going to. If you take a, the time stone out of our universe, it is going to create a branch reality where that time stone doesn't exist, and then that branch reality will not have a time stone. You know, with our universe, we our realities will not have time stones. Meaning, the infinity. Meaning, from what she said, if you take these stones out of our, if you take a stone out of our timeline, you're going to create a branch reality. Now, Bruce stated also, if we take the stone, we use it for the time we need to, and then we return the stones to the to the point of time where we took it at, time will continue to flow in their timeline as it sees fit. Now, this is the problem, because it came up with the Captain America thing. The writer stated, Captain America cannot create a branch timeline. They stated the Infinity Stones are what cause the branch timelines when you take an Infinity Stone out. You travel to the past, you take out a infinity stone from that branch timeline, it create you from that timeline, it creates a branch timeline. From the way the writers explained it. And that makes more sense. The infinity stones create the branch timelines. Because what 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 happened was Captain America shouldn't have came back to our timeline. The Russo brothers say Captain America jumped to our timeline, but that's false. Because Captain America would have to have the quantum navigator on his hand. Old Captain America did not have that quantum navigator on his hand because he needs that to time travel, to navigate through time. He just can't time travel. They made it up. They made it a point that you need your quantum navigator to time travel. And he somehow jumped back to our time. That makes no sense. They said the Russo brothers stated he jumped back to our timeline, meaning he jumped through time. I didn't see that quantum navigator on his hand. So from what the Russo brothers telling me, that's BS. And it is. The quantum navigator wasn't on his hand. So I'm not finna sit here and believe that. And what also kind of makes the Ancient One's emphasis on each reality needs their infinity stones to stay stable. This contradicts that. And it just goes into the bad writing of Endgame, bro. Terrible writing. Thanos, then this is exactly what Thanos said. I use the stones to destroy the stones. Now, from, from my... Let's get an exact definition of destroy. Now, from what I know what destroy is, destroy pretty much, you know, obliterate, kind of just reduce, you know, obliterate, like, boom, destroy. Now, this is the definition of destroy. Put an end to the existence of something by damaging or attacking it. The room has been destroyed by fire. Synonyms, demolish, knock down, pull down, tear down, level, raise, blah, 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 blah. Dismantle, fell, explode. Bomb, torpedo, blah. But to put an end to the existence of something. Put an end to the existence of something. So, basically, Thanos said, I use the stones to destroy the stones. Meaning, he took them out of existence. He pretty much destroyed them. Now, this is the problem. You're telling me, we can have a universe without six stones and we're perfectly fine. Remember, Thanos blew up the space stone. The reality stone, which controls reality. Because in the MCU, the Infinity Stones helped create the universe. They're attached to the universe, bro. So he blew up a space stone, and space is all fine. Thanos blew up the Reality Stone, and reality has not been affected, really. Because they said the snap created a ripple in, 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 in made, and connected to multiverses. And then Thanos blew up the uh, Soul Stone... And the soul world didn't fall apart? Okay. And then he blew up the uh, power stone and nothing happened? Because when Thanos blew up them stones, those characters went five years in a universe where, yeah, the people got wiped out. But for the most part, they were still good. The planets, the solar systems were all good. Nothing really bad happened. And I'm like, wait a minute. So why did the Ancient One emphasize you need to return the stones? Because, yeah, it's going to create a branch reality, but still, she emphasized each universe needs infinity stones. Meaning, you need the infinity stones in your universe or your universe to function and flow properly. Just like she said, you take the time stone out of our universe, you're going to mess up the flow of time within our universe. There's a reason the stones are there. So, Thanos blew up six stones, 
and the universe is still functioning somehow? In our universe? That makes no sense to me. The universe should have fell apart when Thanos blew up six stones. But Thanos blowing up six stones was dumb anyways. But, you know, the MCU, they contradict themselves at times. And that's why I'm okay with a multiverse showing up. But when you when you try, uh, I'm good. Because I'm really, you know what, I'm really off put by the multiverse thing. Because the way they explained it in Endgame and to get it set up, it would they contradicted themselves a lot. Especially with Thanos blowing up six stones. And the ancient one emphasizing, you need to return our stones when you're done. I'm like, what the freak is going on? You blew up six stones and the universe is fine. And people are saying, oh, he shrunk the, he shrunk these stones. No, Thanos said, I use stones to destroy the stones. When he says destroy, he means destroy and take out of existence. Like, boom, they're gone. They're, they're forever gone. There's no trace of them. There's nothing. They are obliterated. They're gone. They're gone. I use the stones, I use the stones to destroy the stones. Thanos said that, bro. He said that. Let's keep going. But the way they set up the multiverse, it's very off-putting. Very off-putting, but, you know, I'll take it. But at the end of the day, the, the origin of the multiverse in the MCU is broken because the Russo brothers and the writers can't even agree on what's the, what's, what's the correct form of time travel in their movie when their movie already came out. And after the movie came out, they're saying two different things about time travel. What's the definite way? Is the writers correct or is it the Russo brothers? I'm going with the writers on it because what the writers said made more sense. The Infinity Stones create the branch realities, not just you traveling back and you create a branch. No, because Loki didn't create a branch. He didn't because how does that work? Do you does, Did Loki immediately go to a new universe? Because all he did was teleport away within that timeline. He just teleported somewhere else. Like how do how do you go to a branch timeline? How does that work? What like as soon as you make a change, or does you go to a new timeline? Does that create a branch timeline? Uh, is it like creates a separate one where <sighs> whatever confusing. That's why they should never use time travel in Endgame. It was an easy scapegoat to write the story. Easy scapegoat, too confusing. And at that, when the writers contradicted themselves, they shitted on other time travel movies. Like Back to the Future, I made it more simple when they did time travel. Time travel is a is a fiction is yeah it could be real, but it's a fictional thing that can be changed and you can do whatever you want with it. But there's tons of movies that have done time travel and made it simple and made it easier to understand. But as far as um Far From Home, <coughs> as far as <coughs> uh, as far as Endgame, too confusing, too much. It's like what are you doing? Let's go. There's got to be someone else you can use. What about Thor? Off world. Captain Marvel. Unavailable. Wait, is that in New York? I thought he said he left his suit at home. This could be trailer trickery, and he could be wearing his Iron Spider suit. But, you know, yeah. But I thought he left his suit at home in the teaser trailer. Because that scene where he's talking to Nick Fury, that's in Europe. That's not in New York. That's in Europe. That's not in New York. I'm just a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. He got that shield suit. Obviously, he didn't create that. I know that for a fact. And like I say, if Spider-Man is not building his suits in this movie, bruh, Tom Holland finna take another L. He better... No, I don't, I don't want to hear he's going to help shield built nah he better build a suit from scratch bruh i want to see him build a suit from scratch i want to see that techno technological prowess of spider-man because that's a big part of his character he's smart technological he can hell he he was able to and he's, he's crafty with the hands knitted a suit together stitched it together he stitches the suits together you know in the comments like snitch he stitches his suit up whoop, 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 whoop. but you know <laughs> all these suits we see in this movie, bro. These are all sh these are either shield 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 given suits or Tony Stark suits. That's either or, bro. None of these suits he probably built, and I believe that. Bitch, please, you've been to space. Yeah, you've been to space. No, of course I'm not. 
I mean, it's kind of obvious. <sighs> this rookie wax Spider-Man, bro. This is the problem with Tom Holland Spider-Man. In Spider-Man Homecoming, Ned found out his identity. That was the stupidest way for your his identity to get found out. He walks into his room, doesn't even look into the window to see if anybody's in there, making sure. He walks on the wall, the ceiling, jumps down, still doesn't check the ground and scan like, oh shit, that's Ned on my bed. And boom. And I'm over like, bruh, are you serious? And this is my problem. I may let Ned into Peter Parker's room when Peter Parker's not there. Now look, I'm black. And I grew up in, you know, I grew up in a black household. Uh, my mom would never do that. I don't care if you're a friend. I don't care if you're a best friend. You're not finna come wait in the house and I'm not there and you just walk in my room. The freak? Yeah, you my friend, but at the end of the day, I can't fully trust you. What if you take something out of my room? What if you start touching stuff in my room? But see, that's me. I'm black. So that in a, in a black household, that don't happen like that. They just don't let friends, parents just don't let friends sit in their kid's room until the kid gets home. The freak, you, I don't know why you would do that in general. Hell, Ned, Ned could have walked in there and freaking uh, planted something. Ned could have walked in there and, and tried to uh, jack uh, Peter's uh, homework for the tests and stuff. Go through his stuff and try to find those, uh, find, find uh, them, them, uh, the study guide in the notes that he was working on. And then in Homecoming, Aunt May, this is why this dude's wag, bruh. He, he he does the same thing again. <laughs> he he jumps out of his room, had his door wide open, and he takes off his mask. Wow, idiot. Is is that you, Spider-Man, bruh? Trash, bruh. That's just that's just too wag, bruh. It's like I don't I'm not even a superhero, and I would know, um, hey, lock my door so when I take off my mask. Nobody doesn't see me, bro. Close your door. He got his identity found out twice in one film, bro. No, three times. Vulture, Aunt May, and um, Ned. Freak. But you know, I don't like. Uh, she could be joking with him right there, but she seems serious, bro. You know what? It starts to make sense because watch me get closer to the end. You're right. You may not be ready, but this is my responsibility. Saving the world requires sacrifice. Sometimes people die. Or maybe Mysterio is helping, but he's going to... Now, what if Mysterio is actually helping, but these creatures came from his multiverse and he's trying to stop them, but when he comes to our universe... The way he's trying to stop him is that he's doing it at a rate where too many people are getting hurt. And Spider-Man's like, bro, you you need to watch your surroundings, bro. You're going to get people hurt. And then he'll be all like, look, you know, kid, this is a war. This is a battle. There is casualties. And from what I've seen, from what I heard about you in here, in your whole situation with your Thanos thing, you should know just as much as I do about the casualties of battle and that this is just realistic. This happens. Lives get lost, but we still move on. We got to finish the mission. And Spider's like, nah, we got to try and save everyone, no matter what. Whether bad, good, we got to try and save them the best way we can. Not nah, that could be that way. I don't know. What if Mysterio, these are Mysterio's villains, and he brought them over here. It's like, hey. In my universe, it ain't working out for me. So I'm finna go over here, pretend to be a good guy, live here, you know, establish myself, and go rob some banks while all my villains doing stuff on the low. And I can as have an illusion of me going up there helping, and then I sneak into a bank, take whatever I want, leave, get rid of my illusions, and Spider-Man catch on like, hey, those are your villains. No. 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 Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Putting my friends in danger. The swinging seems to cool. Hey. <laughs> all of Peter's friends surviving the. Uh, all, of Pe all of Peter's friends not uh, dying in a snap with Peter Parker is so convenient. It's just as convenient as all six of, all six of the main Avengers surviving the snap. It's that convenient, bro.
because realistically, if they didn't die in the snap, which the, this is the, this is the only way it makes sense, they had to have died in the snap. Because if they didn't, these people right here would be five years older than Peter Parker. Peter Parker would still be seventeen because he came from back from the afterlife, so he would technically still be seventeen. But these guys, they all died in the snap too. They had to have. Hopefully, I'm right, and they died in the snap. If this movie tells me they died in the snap and came back. No, if this movie tells me they didn't die in the snap, that makes no sense. Because they would be out of high school by now. But they died in the snap. They died in the snap. That's the only thing that makes sense. They died in the snap. That's the only thing that makes sense. It it For their age. I'm just saying, that's the only thing that makes sense. The world needs the next Iron Man. Now, we can take this from two different ways. We He can be saying, oh, I want to be the next Iron Man. Like, I want to be the next big hero that's willing to, to, to make those self-sacrifices for the people, for the greater good. Because with great power comes great responsibility. And I have these powers for a reason. And I want to be able to take the responsibility. I be I want to be able to fight for those who can't fight when it when it's down to the battle. When it when their fight, when a battle is needed and there, a, a battle needs to be won. I want to be the one willing to take arms for those who can't defend themselves. Now you can be talking about it like that. Or we can just be super obvious in him saying, um, I want to be the next Iron Man. When at the end of the day, you should be being the next Spider-Man. No, no, not the next Spider-Man, but this is why this line is off-putting. You keep bringing up Iron Man. Shut up about Iron Man. Talk about Spider-Man. This is Spider-Man Far From Home. This is not Iron Man 4. Far from home. This is Spider-Man Far From Home. My problem with this with this with this Spider-Man. Where the why is Tony Stark your Uncle Ben, bro? He is not. Uncle Ben is Uncle Ben. Tony Stark is Tony Stark, bruh. Uncle Ben is your Uncle Ben. And Aunt May is supposed to also be your next your your next line of motivation. Your next line of wisdom. Because Aunt May is almost like that. She still gives Peter Parker wisdom to be better. To be better. She she's the next thing of wisdom next to past Uncle Ben. I don't like how they're shafting Aunt May and I don't like how they're using Aunt May as a sex symbol. I don't like that. That's that's that ain't cool. Aunt May is not a sex symbol. Nobody looks at Aunt May like, ooh, I'm about to smash Aunt May. Cut nah. 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 We don't look at Aunt May like that. But I, I thought these were kids movies. Like people say. These are kids movies. Well, they're over-sexualizing Aunt May, so I don't know. Are you going to step up or not? Showing Iron Man again. I get he died, okay? Reminisce and move on. Jeez. The visuals look on point, bruh. Mm. Ah, the visuals look amazing. They do. The visuals look ten times better than Homecoming, yo. Look at that. Great way, Happy. Hide his secret identity. And watch, you're gonna be so oblivious and be all like, <laughs> Thank you, save us. <gasps> and watch at the end of this movie. <laughs> They're still gonna try and play off the fact that they don't know who Spider-Man is, bro. It should be even more... <laughs> <laughs> it should be even more Bruh, I don't know how they don't know this dude is Spider-Man yet You're telling me I don't know why Flash doesn't know I don't know why this white girl doesn't know You're telling me Spider-Man As soon as his class goes to Europe Spider-Man is there As soon as when, when, when his class was at the Washington Monument and uh spider-man showed up and saved them okay 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 they go to europe right and a bunch of people still don't know that peter parker is spider-man as soon as they go to europe spider-man is in europe with them <laughs> and, and and you're gonna sit here and tell me Bruh, they about to find out his identity in this movie. This, this, this man, these writers are writing, writing obvious ways of how you would know this dude is Spider-Man, bruh. As soon as his class goes on a field trip to Europe, Spider-Man's in tow following him. 
And you know what? That should be the biggest question. Why Spider-Man in Europe? I thought New York was his playground. And then they're like, they put two and two together. Huh, Peter's not here right now. He's always gone when Spider-Man shows up. And Spider-Man comes to save our class. <laughs> Bruh, just right here. Guys, out of here! Who are you? I work for Spider-Man. You work for Spider-Man? I work with Spider-Man, not for Spider-Man. New plan. <coughs> now, looking at this whole movie, and my biggest gripe with it is the snap. Now, watch this movie. Tell me, oh, it's another two-year time jump. There can't be no time jump because Spider-Man's a junior. There can't be no time jump. This is immediately like maybe a month or two months after. This is months after or a, probably a week after. Endgame. This is not years because if you tell me this is two years after Endgame, Spider-Man should not be in high school no more. If this movie tells me this is two years after, Spider-Man should not be in high school no more. He's a junior, so he should be done with high school. But... Don't sit here and tell me that he's in... Don't... This movie has to take place months after. It makes sense. Or even a week. It makes sense. It makes sense. He's still in a junior. It makes sense. Now, my biggest problem with this movie is that you... <clears throat> you end Phase 3... You're ending Phase 3 of Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, this movie will make money. It will make its money. But it ain't making nowhere, nothing close to what Endgame made. Endgame had Endgame had its problems. Endgame has its writing problems. But that was a more iconic end to Phase 3 than this, bruh. This is just introducing more. This feels like a Phase 4 film. Where you made us wait and now you get into Phase 4 and you introduce, oh shoot, multiverses? Dang. Now, this is my problem with this. You're ending Phase 3 on Spider-Man, Far From Home. When you know this film ain't going to be nowhere close to what Endgame was. It ain't finna be nowhere close to what Endgame was. Yeah, it might make a billion. But it ain't finna make what Endgame made, bro. It's not. And Endgame was a better end to Phase 3. Phase 3 should have been the end for the previous Avengers. And then Spider-Man Far From Home should be introducing... And, and, and introducing... The new age of heroes, which is started with Spider Man. Then you get Captain Trash Captain Marvel. Then you get Black Panther and Doctor Strange. The new age. Shang Chi. We're getting into the new age of heroes. Because looking at this, this movie does not transition well. This, for the most part, looks more a love of a kids film than a MCU film. It's like they're going full on kid movie. And you know, granted, he's still in high school. Because you look at it like this. Did this did the snap happen? Because from what I see, everybody's all happy go lucky. The only person that seems to be recovering from the snap still is Spider Man, and happy. At least they're acknowledging it. But nobody's acknowledging the snap in this movie, bro. Like nobody, nobody's talking about it. Nobody's feeling traumatized from it. And you're telling me the world went back to the, the way it was. Governments are still the governments went back to the peachy fuzzy way they were. I don't believe that, bro. There, there's, there's still got to be recovering. People aren't going to be going to work like they used to. People are going to be going to some therapies. People are going to be going to, uh, people, work, work routines are going to change. Stuff that should be still, re still in recovery, bro. He's go, they're, they're back to school and they're going on vacation. Realistically, a bunch of, a bunch of parents are be like, no, nah, I want to, uh, you, you finna stay home with me for a couple of days, you know, I just... We was I, I haven't seen you in five years, and now you're back. I, you finna stay with me for a couple of days, and then we'll get you back in the school because the school needs to understand. I was without you for five years, and you're going to stay here with me for just a little, you know, just chill for a week, son, and then you can go back to school. But I just want to, you know, be my kid for you know this week because I haven't seen you in five years. I was in some other world, dead, and I'm just like this. Uh, they. Like, if you're going to lead off from the snap, show the effect. I'm not asking for a depressing film, but acknowledge it, bruh. This happened on a universal scale, and it's like, this world, it's, this movie feels out of place. It doesn't feel like the snap happened to the world. 
it don't. It feels like everybody just because <clears throat> some people will say, "Oh, those who those who were snapped back uh, forgot." Well, there's the other half that didn't die in the snap that remember. There's one half that remembers, and if, if someone tries to run with the excuse, "Oh, the people who died in the snap came back and they and they don't remember it," well, this half remembers. I'm just saying. I don't like the way they're treating a the snap. It should be a lot more serious than what it is. Their government should be government should be recovering. There should be new, you know, uh it should not be going back to this perfect, bro. It it went right back to the peachy fuzzy perfect MCU. It it should not be back this perfect, bro. There's going to be stuff out of whack. There's going to be people still it stuff's going to be out of whack, yo. They they transition back into society so easily again. It's like, for real? Dang. Okay, I guess. But you know, look, I just want to do my breakdown of the trailer. You know, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, as far as Spider Man Far From Home goes, it was terrible ending this on Phase Three. Sure, they're gonna introduce new stuff, but it ain't finna be as as iconic as Endgame, bro. It ain't finna be as iconic as Captain America picking up Thor's hammer. This movie will have nothing to top that. This movie will not be able to top Iron Man, Cap, and Thor walking up to Thanos. Nothing in this movie will top that. Nothing. Nothing in this movie will top the acting from Captain America, Black Widow, Nebula, Hawkeye, and Tony Stark in that film. No acting in this movie will top that. None. Period. None. Nothing will top the final action sequence in Endgame, bruh. Nothing. Spider-Man Far From Home will not top that at all. At all. And that's why I say, should have ended Phase 3 on Endgame. You should have. It makes more sense. But see, this is where I strongly believe, because look at who released this. I think it's on the Marvel uh, Entertainment uh, page, but Sony Pictures released this. As you guys know, Sony still currently owns Spider-Man and they own all his villains too. This is where I think they could be going. This may be the last time we see Spider-Man in the MCU for a while. Until Sony wants to, you know, re uh reestablish a partnership. Because how many films was Tom Holland contracted for? Because Tom Holland been in Spider-Man Home he been in Civil War, Spider-Man Homecoming, Infinity War, Endgame, and Far From Home. I don't think he has any more films after this, bro. I don't. Is if, if he has no more films after this, Sony's finna take him back. And they're finna use him because people paid for Venom. That trash movie made it successful. That made 800 mil. Over 800 million. Almost made a billion. That trash movie. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was dope. Made its money. I didn't pay for it. I watched that movie for free. I'm not paying for Sony stuff. Because... I want to see Spider-Man and all his rights go back to Marvel. If <clears throat> if you guys keep feeding Sony money when it comes to Spider-Man stuff, they're going to make profit and they're going to use it to benefit and they're going to keep. And there won't be no chance of Marvel Studios ever getting back Spider-Man. There won't. Unless Sony gets to a point where there's like, man, fans aren't even paying for Spider-Man that we're doing. Let's just sell them. It's Marvel Studios, you want them back? Yeah, we'll buy them. Or Marvel or some Marvel Studios or Disney opens up a bid to where hey we want to buy back this character, we want to give you this much goo up. How much you need? We want this character because if if well, this is why I believe, this is all belief. I believe if this is the case, and if Tom Holland is not contracted for any more movies, someone comment down below how many movies Tom Holland is contracted for. I really believe they are taking him out. Of the MCU to go back to Sony, and they're gonna and Sony's gonna jumpstart their thing because they got a Morbius movie coming out, Craven the Hunter, Venom two. Well, Venom's getting a trilogy, and he, they're finna do their own thing. They got Spider Verse, they finna do their own thing. They're finna take him back. <clears throat> you know what? I'm not even mad. I don't like his Spider Man period. I don't. I don't like his Peter Parker period. I don't. I don't care if they take him back because the only thing I'm looking forward to in Phase 4 is Black Panther 2 and Black Panther 3. It's probably the best teen animated Spider-Man. Spider-Man from the 90s was college Spider-Man, but teen Spider-Man, as far as animated shows, Spectacular Spider-Man is the best. 
The MCU could have replicated the spectacular Spider-Man, bro. But they gave us Iron Lad. Iron Lad. They gave us Iron Lad. Okay. Uh, hope you guys like the breakdown. Uh, that's Tom Holland and Spider-Man for you. Go have a good day. Go spread that peace, love, positivity, and all that jazz. Deuces.